Right, Sony's new handheld console, the PlayStation Vita, is set to launch in Europe at midnight. The device was launched in Japan Christmas. Sony say more than half a million units have now been sold, but it's entering a very competitive market. More and more of us are using our phones to play games on. Our technology reporter, Day Daniel Emery, is with me now. Daniel, you've actually got one of these things. Here. I there do. We go. Th this is it. Why, why would I want to spend... How much on that? Well, this is the best part of 230 quid, and that's the cheaper version, and there's a more expensive version with 270. Um, basically, Sony, certainly for the first two years, know that the people that will buy this will be gamers. Uh, there is a very hardcore following of what we call Sony fanboys, basically, yeah. uh, and they certainly will want out to go and get this device. This is the first device that's actually got proper console-style graphics and console-style play. Longer term, Sony have a problem. If you're not a gamer, why would you want this device? Mm. Why would you want this, this bit of kit? Uh, and that's a question they have to answer, because if they want to, be, to, to basically you know, broaden the scope of the market, they've got to find an answer to that question. And certainly I and a number of analysts have struggled to, to, to find that. Broadly, what, because I can't make a phone call on it? And why would I use this when I can play games on an well, iPhone? Well, Sony's argument is, and it's quite a fair argument, is that the quality of games in terms of the graphics and everything else you get on this is vastly superior to what you would find on, on an iPhone. And that's true. This is probably the most powerful bit of kit that's out there. Um, but as you say, people are used to have their phones are no longer their phones. They're data storage devices. You can browse the web, you can make phone calls, you can do emails. Now, you can do some of that. You can tweet on this, you can browse Facebook. Why they haven't put a very simple application to make phone calls in this, I don't know, especially because the more expensive version actually uses the 3G network anyway. And there are a number of applications that use 3G to make you know, uh, internet phone calls. So they could have done it. And I, I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity there. Sony are a massive international company. How significant is this device to Sony? Well, to them it's very important. I mean, certainly in terms of the, the main console wars, there were three main players. There was Nintendo, Xbox and Sony. Now, Nintendo was much more of a sort of a, a, sort of a toy, if you will. The serious hardcore gamers were between Microsoft's Xbox 360 and the Sony PlayStation 3. And certainly if you look at the sales figure at Christmas time, the Xbox sold significantly more than Sony. Now, it does feel that this device, and it's very sleek, very good, it almost feels like it was created in the generation before smartphones. Mm. This is the gaming device that everyone would have dreamt of a few years ago. But things have moved on now. We're now used to, you know, for example, we used to buy games on, a, on an iPhone for a f few quid. The really high-end games for this are quite expensive. Now, Sony have addressed that in part. There are a whole range of spectrum of types of games at different price, and they've a lot of third-party games that are out there that cost less. So there is that. But ultimately, the question, what can this do apart from play games? Not a huge amount. An unconvinced Daniel Emery. Thank you very much indeed.